Ben Shapiro's new song hit number one on <laughs> iTunes. How did that happen? But I want to stop you right now. This segment is not about Ben Shapiro rapping. We've talked about that ad nauseum. It does revolve around the issue of Ben Shapiro rapping, but it has more to do with how the narrative machine is fake, how they trick you into thinking demonic degenerates are popular. I'm driving in the car and we hear that song from uh, Sam Smith. I forgot what it's called, but it's a song about how the dad is uh, secretly abandoning his family to have gay orgies. Uh, that's actually what it's about. Do you know, wow. do you know the song? No, with not the shocked, with though. the transgender singer. Sounds like Sam Smith. Look it up. I, I've uh, never body heard shop it. Or something? Kim Petras. Oh, yeah. Kim Petras. Is yeah. that what it's called? I think no, it's so. with Kim Petras is on the song. No, no, no. The body, song, body I think body it's shop. called Body yeah. Shop. Yeah, it's basically Sam Smith is singing that there's a guy and his family is unaware that he ditches them and, and disappears to go to bathhouses and have gay orgies. I'm, wow. like, literally, what the song's about. That takes like going out for milk and not coming back to a whole oh, other yeah. level. Now, here's the important thing. Oh, cool. You see these people perform at big award ceremonies. You see Lil Nas X. Uh, 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 you know, insult Christians, fellate the devil. I, I, he act, I guess he did that in like one of his music videos. And they want you to believe it's popular. You get Nicki Minaj and you get like Megan Thee Stallion and they want you to believe that WAP and things like this are popular. But what we're learning now, thanks to Tom McDonald, is exactly how it's fake. And this is important to understand. Don't believe the manipulations. Washington Post breaks down this, the, 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 the con game they don't break it down. They they exemplify it. But Tom McDonald here in this video explains exactly how they are lying to you. Now, what Tom's video is about is the music industry is cheating. I want to play this minute clip from Tom McDonald, but then I want to elaborate on what he's saying. Here's the here's the clip. I'm going to show you guys how the music industry cheats on the charts, and I guarantee you didn't know this. This is the iTunes charts. That's my song, Facts, featuring Ben Shapiro at number one. You see how Megan the Stallion has two versions of the same song at number two and number three? You see how Nicki Minaj has eight versions of the same song at four, six, eight, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-three? You ever wonder why they do that? Every song has an ID number called the UPC code. This code is what Billboard uses to count song sales. If you release multiple versions of a song, you can use the same UPC code for every version. That means Nicki Minaj's eight versions count as one song when Billboard collects the numbers. We're competing against 10 songs and all 10 versions are going to be combined into two songs. Seems pretty unfair, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the music industry. That's why we need everyone who sees this to go download facts on iTunes or Amazon. Billboard stops collecting our numbers in 24 hours. This is our last chance to lock in that number one on Billboard. Go get those downloads of facts by Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro on iTunes or Amazon. We'd sure appreciate it, guys. Thanks for the help. I'm going to show so, you guys. Let me let me let me break this down a little bit further. Tom Tom's point pointing out how let me see if I can get th there we go. This is true. And we've dealt with this too. You re a lot of people will release a song and then they'll release a remix at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's one song, <clears throat> even though they're completely different. Yeah. So what I'm talking to Carter about, I was like, let's do a song and record it in four different genres. Let's do acoustic folk. Let's do new wave retro. Let's do hard rock. And let's do country. And it's one song. And we can make the one song for everybody. This is the game they play. The reason why it's important. Megan the Stallion. What is it? Bigfoot? That song is going to hit the top of the charts. All of the woke media is going to... Oh, haha. She beat Ben Shapiro. She's so much better and bigger. For whatever reason. And it's through these manipulative games. They want you to believe. The most popular music among young kids these days is degenerate filth. When in reality, that's not true. It's technically true, and that's another thing that's pointed out by the Washington Post. Again, I know a lot of people are like, I don't care about Ben Shapiro rapping. Fine, fine, fine. That's not the point. The point is what we're learning. They In this article, they talk. it, it talks about like what's going on with the song, and they have this really Im, Im, uh, important part. Who is McDonald McDonald? Has he had hits before? They say this. Is Facts really a hit? No, no, no. Hold on. It's number one on iTunes. Worldwide. Why would the Washington Post even ask that question? What's the implication? It's not? No, no, for real. If a song is number one on the iTunes charts and the Amazon charts right now, worldwide, for what purpose would Washington Post actually ask this question? This is priming. They want people to think it may not really yeah. be a hit. But here's what they say. This is important. Facts held the number one spot on iTunes music as of Wednesday, January 31st, sitting ahead of Megan Thee Stallion's Hiss and Nicki Minaj's Bigfoot. According to Apple, I, is, did they have that backwards? I thought uh, Bigfoot was... Oh, that is Nicki Minaj. Okay. <clears throat> they say, according to I Apple, iTunes numbers are calculated by what songs are downloaded and bought through iTunes. Different than Apple Music, which purely measures streams. Streaming numbers paint a different picture. As of Wednesday morning, 
The song had just over 1 million listens on Spotify. On Apple Music, the song hadn't cracked the top 100 songs in the country. Apple did not share data about the song's overall streaming numbers. They go on to mention label artists have access to playlisting and resources that independents do not. Said McDonald on the song's success on iTunes compared with streaming. If we want to compete with them on the billboard charts, this is the way to do it. Yada, yada, yada. I think they mentioned the numbers of the. Here we go. Megan Thee Stallion's uh, Facts has 9.7 million views on YouTube. And uh, Hiss from Megan Thee Stallion has 8.2 million on YouTube. And the Bigfoot audio video has 3.7 million views on Minaj's page. Here's the point. They're asking the question, is it really a hit? Because they are trying to set up manipulative narrative control. What we are seeing right, right here, I can break down for you how they trick you. The Apple streaming numbers, when they say, oh, you know, Tom McDonald didn't even hit the top of the charts. That's too bad. Do you want to know how you get on top of the charts? You're a major label producer. Your label goes to the, the charts and says, your modern music pop chart must have this in rotation X amount of times per hour. How would Tom McDonald compete with them saying default play on the streaming service. Imagine if every time you went to YouTube, the only thing you could see was Timcast IRL. We would have billions of views and we'd be like, well, you know, we're the biggest podcast in the world because we're the best. No, it's because the service puts you in front. Now, it may be that these streaming services are just like it's the easy route. These are big, famous artists. We hear about hear about hear about them in the news. So we, we put them in our uh, digital streaming playlists and when the average person signs up for the first time, this is what they get. You go to YouTube Music, this is what you get. Why? Power attracts power. If you, you, I have to wonder why it is. I talked about this before. You know, there was a song by Paramore, which is, has 6 million views after a year. And they're playing it at the Hard Rock, Hard Rock Seminole in, in uh, Miami. And I'm like, this song is not popular, culturally relevant. No, no diss to Paramore. I'm a big fan of Paramore. But I'm like, it's not one of their biggest songs ever. Why is it being played? It's just easy to give them the default position. Here's the real, the reality of what matters. Do you sell? Do you make money? Right now, no question. Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro have made substantially more money off this song in terms of consumption of the song than Nicki Minaj did and Megan Thee Stallion. Done. That's it. So what are we really measuring? The machine has set up the creative arts industry, movies or otherwise, in such a fashion that they have fabricated and manufactured popular music that is not actually popular. It's been this way for a long time. It's worse today than it's ever been with, with streaming services. But the main issue here is the songs they're putting out and claiming are popular are very often degenerate. Guns, 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 shots, 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 doing drugs, all this really awful stuff. And they want you to believe it's popular. It's not. No, I don't think it is. I, I find, you know, because you guys released a song in December and now this one's coming out with it, with um, Ben Shapiro. I find it a really interesting experiment because if we had all kinds of people sort of in alternative media space doing these kinds of music, uh, every month they're going to pretend that, no, no, this one's not a hit. You know, the more information you get about the system works, the more the better prepared you are to sort of launch a song and try and catch them in their own games. At a certain point, they're making it more obvious what they're doing by denying everyone who attempts to come in from the outside. Uh, it's just a really expensive <clears throat> experiment, I would assume. I'd Is say. it really a hit? That question's incredible. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think the fact that it's the number one song in the world on iTunes means it is. But they're going to say it's not, which is interesting because I think this is something that they'll do over and over again. I mean, there are only going to be more music artists who now are saying, well, well I want to try and get on Billboard, Billboard Top 100. And again, the more obvious it becomes that they're shutting certain kinds of people out, basically <laughs> functionally discriminating against them, the more invalid their data becomes because that's what gets me that they they weigh the str the different streams at different amounts meaning that it doesn't matter what people are actually listening to it just matters who is ultimately lining their pockets the film industry did this over the summer with sound of freedom yep. in much the same way uh much the same way that they point out that like look they're spending 250 million dollars on movies that don't even break a quarter of what they need to even break even let alone profit but when sound of freedom came out they actually started to call into question the way that they were fundraising to make you think that people didn't actually want to go see this movie they're saying like well people are buying tickets but people aren't really going to the movie they were saying that dude and and wasn't it crazy how many people said the power went out yeah the air conditioning went out 
I know people personally who are like the theater. It down. happened to several people that I know here in in Maryland. Well, they're not just doing this same thing to you know Ben Shapiro and this other artist, but they've done it to Bryson Gray. They've done it to when Trump released the or they released a song with the Trump soundtrack over for the J6ers. They uh-huh. did the exact same thing with they that did it to too. us a month ago. Exactly. So it's a very I mean, just like what Hannah said, how many times are they going to keep doing this? Denying reality is their M.O. And it's not just in this industry. It's in the movie industry. It's any time conservatives try to have a like true crack in culture because they want to control the narrative. And they for one, I think a big play is destroying Christianity. Mm-hmm. I'm not a Christian, but come on. The stuff they're promoting, it's just like very on the nose. Look at Little Nas's X is uh, most recent. It's like him being crucified in the music video as he says, I'm a Christian. It's like, no, you're not. Well, and Sabrina Carpenter got in trouble for filming that music video in the Brooklyn, uh, yeah, the, the, the cathedral in, the in the Brooklyn. Church, they, and uh, they came out and they like purified the altar and everything because for whatever reason, it's okay to treat Christians like the other and to mock their religion, but you wouldn't do it to anyone else. I think that in some ways, this is what turns Americans off from mainstream music whether it be pop rap whatever genre just like anything that's playing on the radio when you're constantly hearing like be hypersexual hate everything around you commit crimes like live a life that's just falling apart you don't want to listen to that i think it becomes uh something you want to reject thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.